I represent Afipo North, Afipo South Federal Constituency. I'm from Ebony State. Our Chairman, my respected colleagues, the Minister of Niger Data Affairs and the MD, I remain Right Honorable Kabir al Room. I represent Toranobu Nkura Kibe Federal Constituency. I am from Kano. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Colleagues, our guest, I'm Honorable Saidu Yusuf Miga. I represent Jahun Miga Federal Constituency. I am from Jigao State. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, uh, distinguished uh, Chairman, Honorable Colleagues, our guest. My name is Honorable Adideji Stanley Olajide, member representing Ibadan Northwest, Southwest Federal Constituency. I'm from Oyo State. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, invited guests, my name is Honorable Amadi Dennis. I represent Udi Ezag Federal Constituency. I'm from Enugu State. May it please the committee, I invited her for the whole house. My name is Usoma Nkem Abonta. I represent Okwa East Federal Constituency of Abia State. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. I'm Jarek Bagom Jarekbe. I'm from the Niger Delta. Mr. Chairman, respected colleagues, invited guests, my name is Honorable Amabe Yunusa Akitala. I represent group people of Aydre Iwo Olalua Federal Constituency. I'm from Oshun State, a member of this committee. Respectfully, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, invited guests, my name is Shaba Ibrahim. I represent Lokoja Kogi Federal Constituency. I'm from Kogi State and a member of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable colleagues, Honorable Gunnar Osiribo is my name. I'm from Imo State. I represent the good people of Umkware, Mwangele, Isu, and Njaba Federal Constituents. Mr. Chairman, Honorable colleagues, invited guests, I am Honorable Ibrahim Kunle Yolarewaji. I represent the very good people of Ido Osi Momba, Ilejimeji Federal Constituency. I am from Ikiti State and a member of this committee. Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues, invited guests, my name is Fred Obua, representing the good people of Ogbia Federal Constituency. I am from Bayelsa State. Mr. Chairman, Honorable colleagues, invited guests, my name is Honorable Barista Ifai Chudimoma. I represent the people of Ihiala, Federal Constituency Area of Anambra State. Thank you. Riding on the established protocol, my name is Kolade Victor Akinjo, Elijah Seldo the Federal Constituency, Ondo State. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, honorable colleagues, my name is Chief Thomas Ereitomi. I represent Wari South, Wari North, and Wari Southwest. I am from Delta State. By the grace of God, I'm the deputy chairman of this committee and also the one to preside over today's meeting. Honorable member and our guest, for the purpose of us that are not here in the last sitting, which was on Friday, and uh, our members too, it be those of us to actually give you an overview of what we did in our last sitting. They will give themselves. When they want to talk. When they want to talk. When they want to talk. So, 
So, these are the following, like the minutes of meeting, what we have on, on Friday. The committee chairman, Honorable Lubimi Tunjo Oju, read the summary of the minutes of meeting day two, proceeding which was therefore adopted by the committee. He then proceeds the names of the stakeholders scheduled to make presentation on the talk day as follows. One, MD Rural Construction, Color Ole Johnson, two, Major Nenu, to present via Zoom, four, MD of Osmos, MD of HR Global. The summary of the presentation is as follows. Road down. The MD of Nova has earlier been directed by the committee to appear before Impexing to make its presentation, submit document and answer questions from the committee. But the committee secretary, Mr. Adamu Ishariku Musa, submitted a letter of apology and doctor report to the chairman indicating that the MD was not feeling well. He was then placed on hold. The committee questioned the authenticity of the medical report because the same Adamu Shaka Musa, on the seconds of the preceding hearing, which is on the 16th of July, claimed under oath that the MD was in Portaikot overseeing the completions of the construction of the NDDC quarter building, which he stated was about 79% completed. Two, the committee reject apology letter and the doctor report and direct the MD to appear in Pexins on Monday 20th, July 2020 at 11 a.m., which is today. Two, Kola Wale Jensen representing Act for Positive Transformation Initiative. He was placed on hold. He apologized for appearing on the, on the two on the investigating hearing as scheduled. He further portrayed secure for his life to appear in person and make his submission after, the re after he read Mr. President Buhari's statement of support of the investigation of NDDC by the National Assembly and other government agencies. He also felt compared to appear to expose contrast time, fraud and recklessness in a world of contrast to produce and unqualified company because the common partnering of the Niger Delta Massix, which were living below one dollar per day, is filtered away by few persons in the commission. Three, a red and able to prove allegations of contrast scam contained in his presentation, which was submitted to the Secretariat. Four, he stated that on Sunday 26 April 2020, Nigeria was a member of the IMC the director of projects, Dr. Karo Ojugo, on Channel Television claimed that the commission has not awarded any contracts since the inauguration of IMC in October 2019. But when Osmo Service was mentioned on the program as one of the beneficiaries of the recent contracts on COVID-19, Dr. Karo denied any knowledge of the company called Osmo Service and that the IMC was waiting for Mr. President approval before the commencement of the process of award of contract. Four, five, Mr. Kolawe said that contrary to Dr. Cairo claim, Most of it was awarded a contract for emergency supplies and delivering of medical equipment and consumable, as well as up to the tune of 638 million naira of April 2020, as 15% advance payment, further payment was made in May 2020, bringing the total amount to 4.861 billion. Six, Julius Digger, a contractor was paid 98 million on the 22nd April 2020 for consultancy for provisions of publication in prevention of the spread of coronavirus in 185 local governments in the nine Niger Delta states. This company is an engineering firm and has nothing to do with the media consultants, 
which contravened the procurement act, and also there was no trace of the contract implementation. ARO, AHRO Global is a transport company that was awarded a contract for the procurement of social relief package for the distressed and vulnerable people across the nine NDDC states. A program that was not budgeted for followed due process or approved by FEC. Nine. A contract of 268 million was awarded to a company called Table Building and Logistics for emergency consultancy for provisions of refresher training for counties in prevention and treatment for coronavirus and the sum of 35 million naira was paid to them. The company is not engaged in a medical and health service and yet was awarded the contract for training of health workers. The company subsequent The company subsequently subcontracted the job to a medical firm owned by Dr. Ufoma, who claimed she only received 15 million for the job and no more. Furthermore, Mr. Kola only re revealed that all the emergency contracts awarded to Jackson and some multinational described as agents, emergency consultancy for the construction of infant Jesus. He alleged that this is one of the contract scams. He further complained that payment of $641 million was paid to a company called Clearpoint Communication on the 22nd May 2020. He alleged that the substantial portions of the money was transferred to the Bureau of Change to convert to dollars and also made transfer to NDDC staff account. For example, several cash transfers were made to Mr. Charles Odili into his UBN accounts between March and May, ranging between 1 to 5 million naira. He also informed the committee that the investigation revealed that most contract awards in a like manner are not meant to be executed. Once payments are made, he alleged that con contractor changed the money to dollars and share. He further alleged that the students on scholarship abroad are being looked out for their respective school for no payment of fees while money made for the student are be paid into IMC private account. For example, the RTMD of the Commission of Professor Pondi received a foreign scholarship payment into his personal UBA account on the 17th of April and also Dr. Cairo Ojigwe also received millions into his personal account. He pleaded with the committee to look into the plight of this Abaddon Niger Delta scholarship abroad. He also said that from the findings, the Commission Headquarters building has a got a total of 13 billion after the current IMC was inaugurated, even though the project cannot be adjoined to be of the utmost critical importance now because of the following reason. One, only a minimum of 83.7 million annual rent has been paid to the landlord from 2023 to 2011. And in 2012, only 90 million naira was even paid through Dr. Caro. I'll be brandishing lies on national television that the commission was paying rent for 300 million naira annually. The, recent, the rent grossly rose to 175 million as of the last payment in 2019. Mr. Colaway reveals that the River State government now has the ownership based on a court judgment and expected that the Commission should be given in a better position on how to negotiate a lower rent with the government rather than spending spending the homogeneous amount on the building at this moment. He alleged that the Ronald Construction has some personal relationship and link with the Minister Senator Godfrey Apabio. Finally, he submits his memorandum to the Secretary.
Uh, Chairman, please, uh, may I apply, Mr. Chairman, sir? No. Because of time, and uh, for fearing too, that the submission of various people that have caused appearance before this committee, which you are reading out, that a copy of it be served to the to our invitees. <coughs> then, if they have submissions based on the letters you have written to them, let them lay their submission on oath. That's my application, Mr. Chairman. Right. That the copy of what you are reading, that they should be served because um, they were not here when this woman made presentation and also because of time. So let them be given a copy each of the submission made by other people that have appeared before us so that they can go through them and then we can cross-examine them on the content of those submissions. Uh, Chairman, sir. Yes, sir. Um, my, my own take on that is the fact that we cannot be looking at what others. We should look at their submission. They should bring their submission. Then let's walk them through their submission. Uh, 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 Chairman, Honorable Koku, uh, I really want to rely on the second speaker that we should allow them to the make their own submission on oath. If they make the submission on oath, then the committee can start the work. I think it's more proper and conduct. Thank you. Is that the popular opinion of the House? Yes. Okay. By, by, by way of the motion. By way of the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues. I hereby move that our guests to furnish us with their submission so that we can walk them through with their submission on oath. I beg to move. Chairman, I saw second. I saw second. Motion for suspension of uh, the meetings and to allow them to take their and to allow, allow them to take them on oath is hereby sustained. We when it gets to the time of the end, they will introduce themselves. When we get to when they will do that's what we'll be doing since when they want to make the No, we are taking the presentation with Kola No, no, no. Honorable colleagues, uh, our respected guest, we have the Minister of Niger Delta Deer. Part of the persons that are invited today that will make presentation, we have. Mr. Kola Ole Johnson will have additional information. We have the Minister of Niger Data. We have the RTMD of NDDC. And any other person. But for the purpose of this investigation to kickstart, we will take the acting MD first to kickstart the entire process that we have today. Mr. Chairman, so we let's, let's direct the district. RTMD, please. RTMD, please. Please put him on hold. 
Yes. I, Professor Kamebra Dikmo Daniel Bonday, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this honorable committee shall be the truth, the, truth, the old truth, and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So, help me God. so help me God. The chairman of um, this committee investigating uh, alleged financial malfeasance and other activities in the Niger Delta Development Commission, members of the committee here present, the Honorable Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, the Permanent Secretary um, Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. I um, want to thank uh, the committee uh, for the opportunity to make a presentation. First of all, I want to um, regret the events of uh, the previous week and uh, just promise that uh, it will not happen a uh, second time. I haven't said that. Uh, the probe of the activities of the Interim Management Committee um, of the NEDC was predicated on the malicious allegation of uh, 40 billion naira missing from the accounts of the NDDC. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, please. My fellow colleagues, I still remain a little okay? Mr. Chairman, having put our brother I mean, on oath, I expect that um, he's been written a letter, he's been invited, and the issues have been com com conveyed to him I mean, by, by the referrer from the House. So what I expect this morning is that our brother will lay his submission on oath, and then we can speak to the issues, because we can't be talking offhand, you know. I'm so if the erudite professor has made submission to the to the secretariat of this committee, then we should have copies of his submission, and he should lay same publicly on oath. Here, that is, a, that is the way we should go. So, Saunku, if you have your submission, please, let us have it. Please lay it on oath. Then we are admitting the evidence, and then we'll... Please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in addition to... Uh, I remain honorable Dr. Sheo Koko. In addition to what my colleagues have said, uh, we have to conduct ourselves, speak to the document we, tell, we brought and lay to the committee on oath. That is my own submission. That's why we have to get the document and so that we can speak hand in hand with the, the, the MD of uh, NDDC. Thank you, Chair. I might not have enough uh, copies, but... Um... Please, let me pass it on to you. I hope the same procedure was used for everybody here. So let, let, let me lay background. Uh, please, Mr. Chairman. Point, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I was, um, I think you have remedied the damage because what I wanted to say is just like Waloke said, he has taken oath, he has a document he has presented, he should accept that this document emanated from him and then speak to the document, uh, not uh, open his speech. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Acting MD. Okay. Yes, Acting MD. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. You receive a letter dated May 15, 2020, requesting you to submit several documents to the committee. Yes, this was done. And you responded through your letter 29 June 2020 by submitting a booklet confirming that this is your document. Yes. The document you have there, so, tell Nigeria, is that the document you submit to the, to the investigating committee? This one here? Yes. Yes, that was submitted, sir. For the records of, you have, you were asked to submit documents. Yes. And out of the document you submit, it is only four out of 14, 41 documents that you submit. Correct. I cannot uh, tell you now how many. But, sir, please allow me to make a presentation, sir. Please, sir. Uh, Uncle, you see, we on this side were your representatives. Yes, sir. And you elected us. Yes, sir. And we hold you a duty of care. Okay? We will not abuse the privilege you are given to us to represent you. Okay? Sir, we have rules here. We have rules, and I'm very happy that my senior brother is sitting next to you, you know, who has been on this side in the past. So now you've heard Mr. Chairman, and you confirmed that a letter was written to you, and in response, you have this document. report, this submission, which I've confirmed is your document, yes. that you are the author, you are the maker, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, you should lay that document, and then we take it, and then we now cross-examine you because all you have to say we have to speak to the to no, your doc, submission doc. okay so let's have can we have a copy of your submission then we can now ask questions based on what you have submitted and then it's so that we won't waste time chairman sorry chairman my comments Thank you, Chairman. Uzaman Kimai Bonta is my name. Oh, well, he's been invited via letter. He's here. He has his documents. Let him give his document or speak to it. Thereafter, tender whatever he's got. He has commenced. We, the time is of essence for us because um, the place is tight and we have to observe COVID-19 procedures. Therefore, what am I saying? He may decide whichever way to commence his um, uh, pleading or whatever he wants to call it. If he decides to start from bottom to up or up to down, the important thing is that we will hear his testimonies and if he's run short of what we ask him to bring, he will go get it for us. For now, what is he with? Let's hear him. Let's hear the documents having his comments. We're wasting another time. That's what I think, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, the procedure we have followed since the day we commenced, Mr. Chairman, is that the documents are presented and then they are adopted when uh, presented. We now, based on that presentation, we now question those who brought those documents based on what they have already presented. If we say that we should go the route of asking every respondent to present documents and take time to talk about the documents before we question, then we're not going to live here today. We already had the documents that have been circulated. We have studied them. What we've got to do now is to raise questions from those documents. Mr. Chairman, I so submit. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for the for yielding. Uh, Acting MD. Acting MD. Acting MD. With me here. Uh, it's a letter from the committee dated 15 May 2020 requesting you to supply to supply 27 41 documents to the committee 41 documents you only submitted four documents which are before us and before you. That's why we insisted that you have to lay those documents out, and we speak to the document. That's the fact, and this is the procedure of the House. If you want me to 
read it and tell you what and what we requested you to supply to the committee, I can do that. But I think we don't have much time. The documents are here, and I believe you have the, uh, the, the letter. We can speak on the document. That's the proper procedure. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, sir. Honorable colleague, please, let's be focused. At the MD, you have the document. Speak to the document. I will need to lay a background to speak to these documents. First of all, um, the statistics from the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Accountant General's Office stated clearly that from the 31st of October 2019 to the 31st of May 2020, that the sum of 81.5 billion Naira was spent by the two IMCs. But what we're seeing in this committee is that like that 81.5 billion was spent in four months by the second IMC. Those are the things I was trying to lay down. That uh, for record purposes, the Central Bank and the Accountant General's Office cannot change the figures in one week because that they stated on that oath in the Senate Ad Hoc Committee hearing that 81.5 billion was spent from October 2019 to 31st of May 2020. They also stated that from January 2020... Uh, point of order, Chairman. Point of order. Thank you. Uh, at TMD, those, so, so I, have, I have a valid point to make. Uh, at TMD, at TMD, we, we had a presentation from Central Bank. We had presentation from the Accountant General Federation. We have presentation from BPP. Just tell us from your own side, from your own side, forget with the CBN, forget with the Accountant General Office, whatever you tell us, you are not competent to tell us that. That's why they came, they led the report, and we cross-examined it. They give us what we want, and they left. You can't just come and talk about somebody that you're not there. Talk about NDDC, not CVN and, okay. and, the, and, and the Accountant General Office, please. That's no, my take, Chair. No, no problem, sir. So, let's mix. Honorable colleagues, please, let's allow the MD, the acting MD to talk. Let him talk to us. Speak on the document, please. Thank you. So, from January to 31st of May, yes. 34 billion Naira was remitted from the federal government to the NDDC. Now, out of the expenditure from 31st of October 2019 to 31st May 2020, the 81.5 billion, this IMC spent 59.1 billion, which is very verifiable. Out of the 50 9.1 billion, it's also verifiable that 38.6 billion was spent on capital projects. The IMC published a list of uh, contractors who had been paid up to the 5th of May in the national dailies, 35.3 billion, and no contractor has said it was not paid. Now, all this, the IMC did not give any of those contracts. They are historical contracts that had been existing before we came. On recurrent expenditure, 20.5 billion was expended by the current IMC between uh, 20th of February and 31st of May 2020. Um, it's good to note that a large proportion of the payments were for backlog of expenditure that previous managements had incurred and uh, did not pay. And uh, due to continuous pressures and uh, embarrassment from creditors, the IMC decided to clear this debt. For instance, duty uh, uh, tour allowance had not been paid for almost three years to the workers. And we, 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 we cleared that. Trainings and workshop. The scholarship students, we have not awarded a single scholarship. Each of them is entitled to what is called a takeoff grant and has not been paid for years. We paid 
from 2016, they have not been paid. We paid 500,000 Naira each, which is what they are due. Um, all the hotels in Port Harcourt are being owned by NDDC. We didn't uh, uh, create those. We paid those ones. They all added up to the uh, recurrent expenditure. There was no electricity in that building, the headquarters building, because of 26 million Naira. We've cleared that, and electricity has been connected. The Transcorp building is being owed 30 million, uh, million Naira up to today for over one and a half years. All the media houses are being owed. Patrick Oke and Co. have not been paid for over three years for NDDC today. Sir, I'm just explaining the recurrent so that... Um... Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, I think we need to lay the foundation properly. Uh, the MD, acting MD. I will wait for questions. I'm coming, sir. Acting MD, I just want to guide you. Post one to section 80, 81 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You cannot touch a dime. You can't spend a dime, except in a manner prescribed by the National Assembly. So I will expect you, because I've perused your submission, sir, and I've okay. also seen the letter written to you. So for us to be able to flow seamlessly, you know, so that everybody will be on the same page. I expect that you should lay your approved budget where you derive the strength to spend the money you are, you are telling us. So that document is very key, sir. The, I'm, I'm talking about the, you resume work when? You resume the work when, sir? Uh, uh, 20th of uh, February. February? Yes. Okay, so it is important. If we have your approved budget, be it 2009, which one did you meet on grant? The, um, the funds for NDDC comes from two parts. Mm. In the federal government budget, that Either was way, signed yeah, I've in, seen the various streams of income. In 2017, I mean, uh, in uh, December uh, 2019, approved 80 billion naira. No, sir, we, no, excuse me, sir. For, we for that, NDDC. MD, MD. Actually, yes, MD. We want that document, okay. the, your approved budget, which you are operating. I know you resume job, you resume work sometimes in February. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, we got a letter for budget 20th of March. For which year? For the 2019 budget. 2019 budget? Yes. So you're operating 2019 budget, okay. isn't it? Yes. So we need to have that document, okay? okay? If you have it, please, can we have it? Yeah, I have this, I have this promise now. I have this document just now. Yes, sir. Because we have record of what you have done here, what you have spent, both on personnel, both, both on uh, overhead and capital. Please, please. Uh, so, please, please, please Mr. Chairman, let us, uh, let us have that approved uh, document, please. This is the correction of it. Let me see. This one is just approved this thing. Two thousand nineteen budget. This is the summary of this. Sir, excuse me, sir. This is the a covering letter conveying the this is a communication of the between approval. the clerk of the National Assembly and SGF. What I'm asking you is this: yeah. the approved budget which you're operating. Yes. The approved budget that you're you operating. Can we have it? Prof. Prof, you know you can't put nothing on for nothing. You can't put something on nothing. So the foundation, the ground on, is where is your, if we have a full budget, which you're operating, there will not be cross-checking whether what you have, we are spending, spending is contained it. in the budget. We'll, we'll make that available to you, sir. Okay, Mr. Chairman, just take note that we need to have the approved budget, budget. okay? No problem, sir. So, um, Chairman, I'm not going to the other things there except I, I'm asked. But I just wanted to lay, I said I just wanted to lay a foundation. So you have told us what you have spent on overhead. Yes, sir. You've told us a scenario of contractors who have worked, who have not been paid for years. You've talked about people who have their bonuses, DTA, outstanding for three years, yes, yes. which you have cleared. Yes. And so my worry was, okay, where, is, where did you take those money from? And that's why I was asking for the approved 
budget. budget. We'll, we'll, so if we have the approved budget, we'll bring then it you, 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 you show us the approval for paying where provision has been made for those items. Even historical debts? Yes, historical debts. Okay, we'll show it. Yes. We'll show so it. that is because if you don't see, you see, budget planning, budget formulation stems from provisions of Procurement Act. Okay, no problem. If you, sir. If you go to section 20, section 21, section 18 of Procurement Act, you will see how budget should be, should be prepared. Yes. When you are preparing your budget, did you do needs assessment? Did you come up that, okay, you are owing extra Z contractors? Their jobs have then been, you have certificates approved. Were they accommodating your procurement plan? Assuming you are not starting, I'm coming, sir. Assuming you are not starting new projects. If you are starting new projects, were they accommodated? Did you tell Nigerians the method of procurement you are going to use? This is how the foundation we need to lay. Then we now begin to see justification sure, for it. in the money, in the money, in the funds you are spending. No problem, sir. You, you, you get that, sir. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask the acting MD. Please, uh, MD, please. Have you finished? Please, the leader, the leader of the house is here, please. Have you? The leader of the house is here. Mr. Chairman, please let's make progress. Yeah, I have here the appropriation bill 2019 with the statutory transfers to the NDP. No, sir, just give us a copy, please. A uh, class, Secretariat. Let him lay it, let's have it. But uh, we need the copy back. Please make a copy and give us back. MD, we are waiting for you, please. We are waiting for you. No problem, sir. They... We, we... Sir, sit down. Go sit down, sit down, it's okay. Sit down, sit down. Attention right now is the presentation of the 2019 budget of the NDDC. And uh, that was interrupted. Yeah. The Over the course of our uh, presentations by House different media. people, sir. No. Objection. Please. The document. The budget. Please lay it. 
have um, we are making copies to bring to you the uh, 2019 Appropriation Act, in which there is clear provision of money for NDDC, sir. Okay, we'll, gi we'll give that to you. Okay, just round up. Well, we have uh, uh, documents we will have wanted to hand over in response to majority of the accusations that have been done against us. I don't think um, we need to present these things. And I should be given a chance to explain these things. If not, because it's been put into the public domain. Somebody talked about uh, Infant Jesus. You were reading the, the, the... And we have all those documents to, to, to debunk all those things. Pe Sir, there is a route called uh, Infant Jesus in uh, Asaba. Please, Secretariat, take and, and see. Acting MD. Acting MD. Yeah. Actually, you recall that when I raised my observation earlier, yeah, I, 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 I pleaded with the chairman okay. that we should respond to those things. Yeah. Because we are being uh, crucified. In, um, Chairman, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Honorable Ben, go ahead with your point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, because time is of the essence, and the minister, the uncommon minister, is sitting quietly, we need to finish quickly with the MD so that we can take him. The way we are going, we might end up wasting a whole lot of time on this particular witness. Our procedure has always been, once you are taken on oath and you have adopted your document, questions will come out of the document because this document has been in our possession since they laid it. They only formally adopted it today under oath. Those questions will ask will give rise to him calling for further document to explain the questions we threw at him. But for now, going, leaving him to explain to the end of the day, I don't think he's going to do us a great service. Let us speak to the document that have been laid before us, ask questions, and in the course of answering the question, he is allowed to bring in any document that will help to clarify whatever he wants to present before us. Please, that is what I want to present to you. Point of order sustained, uh, Honorable Ben, your point of order is sustained. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman, no. sir. The, the way, uh, excuse me, MD, excuse me, excuse me. You finish your presentation. Um, now, now, go straight to the presentation. The key points, the money received, the key points, I like it. That, that you come out so that we can continue, please. Mr. Please. Chairman, point of order. He has, he brought a document which he has adopted. That is his presentation. We ought to start questioning him based on the presentation he has made. He has, he don't need to speak through the document again. He has adopted it, sir. Let us go into questioning so that we can face other persons. Mr. Chairman, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir. 
the, the chairman's ruling stands. The chairman's ruling stands. And we should go by the chairman's ruling. Mr. The chairman. chairman's ruling stands. Mr. Chairman, sir. Yes. Um, for fair hearing, somebody spoke on Friday for almost two hours without interruption, without even um, uh, speaking to any uh, uh, document. The, those who have been coming to accuse us have come, there's another one called to come again today. He has extra information. And people are giving chance, and me, I'm putting a straight jacket. Just do only this. Please, sir. Please, sir, allow me to do my presentation. Yes, somebody. Chairman. MD. Yes, sir. MD. Chairman, sir. Please. Honorable member, please. MD. Yes, sir. Go ahead with your presentation. Thank you very much, sir. When I started, I was trying to lay a background of everything that happened. I'm going to hand over a file. Please, where is the secretariat? Containing the reasons why we asked um, the chairman to recuse himself. Then um, I'll go straight to the point about the different things. We've been accused of um, the scholarships. Um, We didn't give scholarships, but we, we, we had the report that myself and uh, Dr. Cairo, that we paid ourselves scholarships. And the basic truth is that we were processing these scholarships for these students before the late EDFA died. And just as we were about to submit it, we had the, uh, accusations that our children were in the scholarship list. This had to be brought back and scrutinized. What basically happened is that like the universities invited the NDDC to visit for verification and for graduation. They gave the letters and Esther Code was prepared. The preparation of the Esther Code started before I got to NDDC. I only approved it and it was paid on the 16th of April. Because you cannot pay somebody extra code the day the person is going to the airport. You have to get a visa procured. There is a long time. If the journey is not made, it is for us to, to return it. But somebody will come here and come and say, uh, Cairo paid millions to his account for foreign scholarship. Please, we need to debunk that. Right now, as we speak, the scholarship payments is being processed. And this week, we clear the scholarships from 2016. Um, the forensic audits, we've been accused of every type of thing. The forensic audit is ongoing. And uh, I will not go into that. The NDDC does not have control over the forensic audits. Our job is to provide the enabling environment and provide the requisite documents and whatever they need. Somebody here said the headquarters building is um, um, so, uh, 74 or whatever. Please, uh, I will have put this on the slide to show you the pictures of where the state is now. Myself and Dr. Cairo, we occupy the 12th floor. That's where we work from. Uh, then um, when we came in, the staff morale was very low. Staff had not been promoted for four years. We cleared backlog of, uh, 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 of these promotions. Sorry, this is the uh, secretariat. Postponing the trip. Take this one for Infant Jesus and uh, Vincent Peter Road. Then, um, um, bad uh, working environment. Somebody, if you have. Infant Jesus is a road in Delta State, in Asaba. Please. Um, the. Environment in the NDDC headquarters today is very poor. If you've been there, cramped, packed rooms. So somebody's talking about there's no justification to go to a new headquarters building that's been going on for almost 20 years. Lassa fever kits, maternal delivery kits, science equipment for secondary schools, all those contracts and payments were before the IIMC2 came on board. We didn't do any Lassa fever payments. Lassa fever payments, let me give you the expenditure profile of the IMC before me. 
so that you can see the payments. I'm going to give you the documents of the Lassa Fever kits and everything before we came in. Then um, I think I'll stop for now. But the thing is that like, um, we've gone through a media trial and be judged. I've seen all things about face of a thief, my face, face of a thief, for, with no proof of me stealing anything. I'm going to get documents to hand over to Secretariat so that you can... Uh, uh, thank you. Hello. Honorable colleagues. Honorable colleagues. Uh, you heard the MD. So, is any member that has question in relation to the presentation that you have made? Mr. Chairman. 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 Honorable Ben. Papa, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Honorable Ben Roland Igbakwa. I represent Ethiopia East, Ethiopia West, and by the special grace of God, we're from Delta State. MD, sir, you know you are my brother. Who authorizes the information that leaves NDDC? I want it to be interactive. Sorry. What, what, what you publish in pages of newspaper and television interviews? Television news. We, we have a, a corporate affairs uh, directorate. Who authorizes them before they go out? I do. You do? Yes. On, on Monday, June 29, 2020, okay. there were a, a number of daily newspaper publications signed by one Charles Audley, Director of corporate, headquarters, uh, corporate Affairs. And in that publication, you said, that's as of June 29, because just here now, you told us May that you've only paid about 30, 38 million. And in that publication, the total you said you have paid was 35 million, 353,000, 35,353,932,910.54. Can you explain the discrepancies? between what you just told us and that publication, if you actually approve that information out to the public? I actually approve this, and even in this my small report, it is clearly stated there that as per the 31st of May, 38.6 billion had been paid for projects. The but publication is for June 29. Yes, it's we were showing 35. what had been paid as per the 5th of May, when the National Assembly made the allegations of a 40 billion era missing. We needed to show that there was no 40 billion era missing, so we calculated the payments as per that 5th of May, and that's what was published. Now, but what, was, what we have paid as at May is 38. 38.6. And as at June, you added more to it? Of course. You do the, fresh payments? I mean, like uh, the NDDC is not a bank. We don't save money. And as I said, we're trying to clear um, backlogs of... Because we have cases in the courts, Ganeshi others. We just even finished paying um, a contractor who won cases against us, 400 million naira. Okay, that's and, one. And because of that... Don't worry, that's, that's good, that's good. You told us, we have listened to you, we listen to what you did in the Senate, where you said that a whopping 1.5 billion is to take care of ourselves. Is there any budget line to authorize that take care of ourselves in the budget of 2019 that we approve for you? I, I, I mean, like, um, if I had said uh, take care of ourselves, I must have said that in Andy, anger. Andy, yes, sir. Please, you are before this committee. Answer the question direct. Because you are under oath. I'm under oath. Yes. yes. Answer the question. That the 1.5 billion, 1.5 billion COVID-19 palliative you took. It was not 1.5 billion, please. The figure is shown clearly. Tell us, tell us the figure. It's 1.32. 
1.32 yes. billion. Yes. 1.32 billion. Yes. Now the question the honourable man, the honourable house member is asking you. Yeah. Where did you have a, the budget line in 2019? Where you derived that power to spend that money? That's the I, question. I, I, I will provide that answer for you. I will check. I don't want to lie on that oath. I will provide the answer for you. Uh, MD. <laughs> MD. MD. Yes, sir. I know you are a very learned person. You are one of the most learned person in this room. You don't. You don't have answer for it now. Okay. It means. You spent money. Can you agree with us? Will it be right for us to say that you did extra budgeted expenses, which was not budgeted for? Uh, I will not say so. Um, let me ask my EDP to explain, because I don't want to. I think he has more facts concerning that. Is he under oath? Okay, it's not under oath. No. That's why I said I will provide the answer. I said I will provide the answer. Now, uh, MD, you have the budget with you. The budget of 2019, you have it with you. Correct. MD, 2019 budget, in which you have told this committee that you, is the budget you are operating on. You have it. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I said I will provide the answer to you. No. You have the budget with you. In front of me, yes, sir. The budget. The budget you are operating. 2019 budget. I will provide the answer, Mr. Chairman, sir. No. We'll bring this to you, sir. Ah. We'll bring this to you. It will be sent to your committee. MD. MD. Mr. Chairman, sir. MD. Mr. Chairman, sir. The budget of 2019, you tendered it. Yeah. I tendered the... You tendered the budget of 2019. Yeah. I give the letter from... That is not the budget. That's not the budget we signed. The budget we signed for you in 2019... You have it here. Okay, they said they have gone to make copies. I said huh? we'll provide this to you. Okay, yes, you, don't, you don't have the budget here. Yes, I don't have it. Here. You don't have the budget I here. I don't have it here. It will be provided yeah. to you. But I don't know if other people will. Mr. Chairman, sir. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, sir. Please. Mr. Chairman. My leaders and colleagues, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, may I request that uh, the clerk of the Secretariat furnishes this gentleman a copy of the budget we have put for him. If you, don't, if you are not harmed, because I've read the letter given to you, you will have various documents that you are asked to furnish this committee. So if you don't have the budget here, uh, we have a committee on library and research. The clerk, please get us a copy of the 2019 approved budget for, this, for, the, for the acting MD. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, no, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Please, my honorable colleagues, I would love the chairman to allow the acting MD to ask the other person to take an oath so that he can answer the question, not till we wait for him. Please. See, MD, uh, my leaders and colleagues, post one to section 20. It is the MD. Yeah. That we have business with her. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Don't worry, sir. We will help you. We will help you to get to, to that everybody gets justice here. Me, Madam Clark, let's have a copy of the approved budget. budget. Then, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, we, start be, we now begin to look at all the expenditure he has incurred, whether they are contained in the budget or not. <laughs> and if the debt we are paying, if they are captured in the budget, we also see it there. It is then we can come to a conclusion. A procurement uh, scholar is there. <laughs> yes. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Ms. MD, please. From the report that you have given, the financial report, 
acting MD from the financial report. How much did you receive any time base? How much did you receive any, from the time this interim management committee had been set up? How much has the interim management committee received? There's no his own committee, please. Yes. Your mic. From uh, the federal government remittances. Including revenue. Including revenue. In total, I'm trying to break down. We get about 6.4 billion monthly. We stopped in uh, June. Well, we've not done anything since June. Then we have some payments from the oil companies, very little. Um, um, I, I, I had computed it before, but. MD. Okay. Yes, sir. You are the chief accounting officer of the commission. I agree with you, sir. How much have you received? This interim management committee, how much have you received so far? So far, this interim management committee will have received about 72 billion. Mr. Chairman, in accounting parlance, we don't say about two plus two is four. So, uh, acting MD, with documentary evidence, I will provide that. No, sir, excuse me, sir. If you don't have them here, then we are being ambushed. Then we are not able to do anything. So we have to speak to records. No meanders. Let us speak to records. Your DFA should be handy. It should be around you here to support you, to help you. You came on board in February. Between February and uh, July, or June, let's say June, how much have you received? from various sources as captured in the act setting up NDDC. And I saw section the NDDC Act. He's trying to say. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. While, while the MD is trying to, while the MD is trying to give us how much you receive from January to date, MD, I have a question for you. You paid, Akin MD. You paid 641 million naira to clear point communication. 641 million to clear point communication. You paid to them as the MD of NDDC. Is that money budgeted for in 2019? What are the money meant for? 641 million to clear point communication. What are the purpose of the money paid to them? And is this money budgeted to uh, in 2019 budget, uh, budget for clear point communication. Thank you. Yes, sir. This money is part of the 2.5 billion naira that is in for the forensic audit in the 2019 budget. We can hear you, well, sir. Andy. 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 Yes, sir. Please speak out. Speak out. For the 2019 budget, yes. there was a proposal for 2.5 billion for the uh, forensic audit, out of which about um, 1.2 was approved. And out of that, um, I think uh, 318 was approved for the lead forensic auditors, and only a small percentage has been paid out before the uh, budget expired on the 31st. Yeah. It didn't say anything about it. Okay. I, I, sorry. MD. Yes, sir. I believe I'm going to ask questions and should be answered so that Nigerians should know. Yeah. I said, this money you paid 
to clear point communication, the money entails for what? What did you contract? Okay, the purpose for the... Just hold on. Hold on. What this money entails for? And is this money budgeted in 2019? That's my question to you. Okay. Thank you very much. The money was paid to ClearPoint Communication for a variety of uh, purposes all related to the forensic audits. The, there are 185 local government areas and each of them was budgeted for 3.46 uh, million one uh, allowances for coordinators per local government area, training for the coordinators, setting up of um, information desk for the coordinators. These coordinators are the people to identify the sites of all the projects in the NDC area. Because part of the problems, if you read the Auditor General's uh, 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 report, on NDDC between 2008 and 2012. Okay, hold on. You contracted ClearPoint Communication to itemize or point the project you have in NDDC areas? Is that what you are trying to say? They will get local people in each of the local government. They will recruit local people in each of the local government areas to identify these uh, sites. The site for what? Where the NDDC projects are. Because okay. most times when they go for uh, inspection, people are not able to locate these projects. And so we needed local people who will guide and so also... You pay, hold on. So you pay six for $12 million for a clear point communication, con maybe a consulting company, to locate, to ask people to locate projects no, no, of NDDC? Excuse, listen, Your sir. own projects? Listen, sir. The people need to be trained also. As pointers for projects. If you let's, let's, we we were trying to change the narrative. If you just leave, I I, I didn't finish. I, I can I I still. So sorry, please. Sorry. So so the clear point. The only work we contract clear point to do is to ask people to no, point no, no, project no. for you. Clear point has been a consultant in the NEDC before I even came in. Clearpoint has been... But it's uh, named Clearpoint Communication. They are putting desks, tables, and I mean, I mean, help desks, communication desks in all the places to locate the projects. Okay, is that, is that budgeted in 2019? It, is 6.41 budgeted for Clearpoint in a line item of 2019 budget? Is it budgeted for that purpose, to Clearpoint Communication? I wouldn't say it was uh, clear points is written in that budget as a line item. I don't think so. Okay. Again, you paid 536 million naira to a company with the tagging of the campaign Save Life in the Nara Delta area. That company, we want to know the company. And uh, is this 531 million equally budgeted for to save lives of Niger Delta people? That's another question for you. Save life campaign. 536 million naira. You paid it. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out issues based on the report you give us to the committee. 641 to clear point communication. 536 to save life campaign in the Niger Delta area. I will need to check and get back to you. You need to check? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Next thing. Who should be saving life? Mr. Chairman, thank you for yielding the floor to me, Mr. Chairman. Do I have the floor? Yes. Yeah, you have the floor. All right. Mr. Chairman, um, MD, uh, the first point I want to make is that you should not be irritated that we are asking you questions about the budget. Under Section 80 of the 1999 Constitution, which guides us, apart from lawmaking, the other job we do is oversight we have this power of the pulse. It's one of the strongest 
the, one of the most important powers we have, power of the purse. That purse is the budget. And that is why virtually every question we are asking you here has to do with the budget. The budget is very important, even to private individuals, because you are not expected as an agency to spend money outside your budget. I hope you know that. Yes, sir. Now, you told us on that oath right here that you are still preparing to pay money to students who are on scholarship. Now, we are aware that you don't have a 2020 budget yet. What you are operating is the 2019 budget, which, as you know and as we know, ended May 31st, 2020. We are now in July, so you are not expected to be spending money from budget 2019 that expired. From where are you going to spend this money you said here on oath that you are preparing to pay students who are on scholarship? Are you aware that every expenditure you make from 31st May till date are not are not